In this video, we will introduce Sobolev spaces. So let me consider I an open interval of R, which is not empty, and define H1 of I as the set of all functions V in L2, such that the derivative of V is also in L2. And by derivative of V, I mean the distributional derivative of V, the one we just introduced in the previous video. And a notation uh, a remark, if i is the interval a, b, uh, then h1 of i is simply denoted h1 of a, b. Now, h1 is obviously a linear space, and it can be endowed with an inner product, uh, making it a pre-Hilbert space. And that inner product is simply the inner product in L2 plus the inner product of the, of, in L2 of the derivatives. So it's uh, uv in L2, inner product in L2 of uv, plus inner product in L2 of u prime v prime. Now this norm is actually, I mean, the, 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 this inner product produces a norm, and the norm is uh, actually complete, uh, which means, I mean, the, the space is complete for this norm, which means that not only is it a pre-Hilbert space, it is also a Hilbert space. So H1 is a Hilbert space. Now, I could define uh, HK for any K in, in N uh, the following way. HK is the space of U's in L2 such that the nth derivative is in L2, M being between 0 and K. Now, when I do the 0th derivative, as you know, it's just taking the function. And I can endow this linear space with an inner product, which is the sum of all the L2 uh, inner products of u and v and u prime, v prime, and all the way to uk, vk. And for that norm, the hk is uh, complete, which means that it becomes then a Hilbert space. Now, H0 is simply L2, and of course will be simply denoted L2. Let me give you an example here. Let's consider I, 0, 2, and let's consider the function f, which is x on 0, 1, and 2 minus x on uh, 1, 2. So basically the, the graph is here. And that function will be called a basis function, and you will understand why it is so when we define the element methods. Okay, so I have this function f, which is obviously an L1 lock, it's uh, even L1, it's an L2, it's not a problem, so it's a very simple function. Uh, the question is, is it in uh, H1 and is it in H2? Well, let's see what the derivative is. I mean, what is the derivative of F? Well, obviously F, uh, well, will have to be differentiated uh, uh, in a distributional sense because uh, it's not differentiable um, uh, with, the, with the functional definition of the derivative. And if I differentiate it uh, in the distributional sense, what I will have is on 0, 1, well, I can already tell you that the value will be 1, and in between 1 and 2, the value will be negative 1, quite, quite obviously. So, so what we have is that the derivative of f will be 1 minus 2 h1, where h is the Heaviside function uh, that is uh, going to be equal to, to 0 all the way to 1, and then to 1 from 1 to 2. To, to, to. Okay, so, so here is the derivative of f. Well, that function is in L2. Subsequently, f is in h1. Is it in h2? Well, uh, what about the derivative of the derivative? What, what about f second? Well, I need to take the derivative of 1 minus 2 h1, which will be, well, the derivative of 1 obviously is not a problem, uh, and then that will be minus 2 delta 1, which is not in L2. So the answer is no, f is not in H2.